Hey, you found me here at Home Brewer TV. We're gonna have some fun again today. We're gonna talk a little mash tons, a little mash paddles. We're gonna talk a little books, and we have got two great beers to try today. So you just stay with me. This segment sponsored by homebrewtalk.com. Join us and talk about your homebrew ideas, questions, recipes, or anything else to help with your homebrew enjoyment. homebrewtalk.com. Join us on this great forum. <laughs> I have gotten so many emails from you guys wanting me to further describe my mash tun. It really is a simple unit, but I am thrilled if I can give you any information that will help you build something similar. The route I went is I got an old keg that I bought from my local home brewer for 30 bucks. I thought it was a steal. Brought it home and I cut the hot hole out in the top. I wanted that hole plenty large because remember, we're gonna be dumping our grains and we have other equipment that have to go inside of this. So that was my mash tun to start with. I love working with old cakes. I added a temperature gauge to the mash tun by just simply drilling a hole through and sealing it very tightly to it. It works well. This particular gauge gives me different mash-in temperatures. My sparging temperatures, it has become a really nice gauge. The other piece I added was a valve. Simple stainless steel ball valve. And this allows me to bring out the wart from the mash tun into my boil kettle. A false bottom is what is added to the interior of the mash tun that holds the grain and allows it to be filtered. It is just a stainless steel circle with a whole mirror of a thousand little holes. Tube from the center runs to the valve that was installed and allows the wort to flow through and into the boil kettle. Now the final consideration on my mash tun was to be able to keep the temperature of my grains as they're mashing out consistent. This is where a lot of people will use one of those coolers or igloo uh, insulated water containers because number one they are insulated and they work very well. But I went with the stainless steel keg because I wanted maybe later down I might do a uh, a, a different system of, of maintaining temperatures. I could also add heat to this at some point if I wanted to. What I did do, because obviously stainless steel doesn't hold temperature worth beans, is I went and got some insulation that is used for ins insulating hot water heaters. And I do a double wrap of it over the unit. I made it so I could take this easily on and off, held on with just bungee cord. I can easily remove it so I can clean things easier. And with the double wrap, I'm finding that I'm maintaining my temperatures in this unit within about a degree or two of my initial temperature range which works out wonderful for my mashing. Now the final thing that I have to do is I've got to insulate the top. So I created, simply, a lid out of the same insulation. And it works wonderful. Slip it in, it seals into the top of the keg, and this thing stays its temperature so well. I think you're going to find Cost-wise, we're probably really close between using a keg versus one of those igloo units. Because number one, we both need a valve in order to get our 
wart out. Number two, we need some kind of false bottom, false something to get the wart out of the tune without having all the grain go with it. And number three, we need some kind of a temperature unit that tells us what our mashing temperatures are, whether it's a unit built into the unit or it's something that you put a probe in. But overall, cost-wise, we're going to be looking really similar. I just happen to like having this unit. The other thing I love about it is I'm able to do uh, big beers in 10-gallon batches in this container. Do you remember in one of our past episodes, we were brewing the old stock ale? And I was showing the brewery and how I do my, my way. Well, I was mashing in with my trusty mash paddle. And I think I made some kind of comment about, mm, a <laughs> little bit little. Well, I had a surprise. Todd with mashpaddle.com, you got to check it out, new sponsor said, hey, you need something better. And this is what he got me. Check this out. Now this is a mash paddle. A little different. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I was excited to get this. It comes in different kind of uh, views here, bottles or hops or grain as you see here. I love the fact that he actually does uh, engrave whatever you want on the handle. And here's what's really cool. Even engraved Bad Frog Brewery right into the handle. And this thing, I've used it. It works wonderful. Now I've got to admit, I had a thought about this is one big paddle. And I've got my hand holding the bucket in and I'm trying to stir in my mash. But you'll notice how quickly my hand went right down to here. It's balanced so well that this is easy to do as using this little guy. Matter of fact, it's even easier. This worked really well. And then when I want to do a big mesh go at it, Todd, I got to tell you, you knocked it out of the park with this one. I really like this mash paddle. Guys, check him out. It's mashpaddle.com. Todd's a really nice guy. We had a great conversation on the phone. And he can set you up with your own mash paddle with your brewery name. Even in this computer age, I'm still a book nut. I am a voracious reader, love reading all kinds of books, and if I can find some beer books to read, even better. Now, there's lots of great technical beer books out there. But there's also some, what I would call more lighter reading beer books. Something that you might read at night before going to sleep. That also is full of information. And here's one I wanted to share. This book is fantastic. Tasting Beer by Randy Mosher. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I learned a great deal from it. It talks about a tremendous amount of things from grains, hops, some little yeast, vessels to drink out of, different styles of beers, foods with beers. It's just full of incredible information and I think you'll really enjoy it. I know it's one in my bookshelf and I have to say, Randy, I absolutely love your saying, and I've kind of taken it on myself. I am also now a follower of Randy, and we are beer evangelists, saving souls one pint at a time. This segment of the Tasting Room is sponsored by To Design Art. Jewelry to get you out of the doghouse. We're in the tasting room. I got two more exciting beers to try this week. And they're really different. One's a lager and one's an ale. Wasn't too long ago that 
we've got a lovely email from some viewers in Germany who said, can you do more reviews of loggers? Well, loggers are not the easiest thing to get in Reno, other than, well, you know which ones. So, I ask you guys to give me some recommendations. And hands down, I had more people recommend Trog's Double Bach. Well, I gave the brewery a call because Trog's is not available out west. And I talked with a gentleman out there that works in the brewery. I believe he's their brewer. And he was so kind to send me a bottle just for this show. So, awesome. You guys, check out this label. This label is very cool. If I see a whole roll of labeled bottles, it's going to catch my eye. I'm going to look at it first. Marketing. Well, let's get started with this. Trog's Brewery is in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Started by two brothers. <clears throat> John and Chris Trogner. Their first beer was poured in 1997. Well, their philosophy for making beer is they're going to make beer you love and not worry about what styles. <laughs> I like that. This beer has got a ABV of 8.2%. So it's a good, strong beer. It's got a 25 IBU, the International Bittering Units. Beautiful, beautiful copper-colored beer. Look at this. Mmm. Not a great head. Probably my pouring problem. Has a nice, nice aroma. A floral aroma. All right, I know, you're just dying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Holy cow. This is spectacular. You did not steer me wrong. <laughs> this is a spectacular beer. And of course, I can't get it out here. Oh. And the worst part of this is the crew did a rebellion on me and said, no, no, you're not hogging the beer. We get to taste the beer too, and I only have one bottle. Well, this is really a good beer. The IBUs, the, the bittering is, is nice and low, so the hops are not overwhelming, but I have this great explosion in the mouth of flavor. Incredible flavor. The, the, the malts are just, oh, this is, maybe if I drink it quickly enough while we're on screen, I don't have to share it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Our next one is Dogfish Head. There's been so much talked about lately on the forums as far as Dogfish Head Brewery and Sam, who is doing a new show, Brewmasters. I love the show, Sam. It is so fantastic just to see a beer show on television. I know, good catch. Well, the beer that we're going to try today is a Palo Santo Marone. Now, I didn't realize this when I picked the beer up, but this is a monster beer. This is 12% of alcohol. That's huge. And it's got a bittering units of 50 to balance that out. When this is brewed, it then is fermented and aged in Palo Santo wood, which comes from Paraguay. How cool is that? Wow. Ooh. Beautiful, dark, dark beer. I have to admit, Sam, Never have had a beer of yours I didn't like. Look at that beauty. Oh, and the aroma. This is the aroma of, of, of lots of barley, lots of wonderful grains. Mmm, delightful. Mm. Oh my God. 
Oh my goodness. I don't think, after I tasted this beer, and it exploded in my mouth, and I realized, my goodness, this is an extremely exciting beer. Now I gotta follow it up by another beer. Is it gonna, well, guess what? Dogfish Head's beer is spectacular. This is another one of these with incredible tastes. I think this is one of the things that I really enjoy in great beer is I want lots and lots of taste. And this has got a taste to just die for. Mmm. All right. Well, guys, you're going to love both of these beers. I know I do. These are spectacular. Trogs, three and a half thumbs up. I may even have to add four. This is really a monster and exciting tasting, spectacular beer. Sure wish you could sell it in the West. And Sam, you knocked it out of the ballpark again. Wow. When are you going to open a brewery out here? This one, three and a half, maybe a four, two. These two are spectacular. You've got to try these if you love big beers. Thanks for spending time with me today. I know I enjoyed it. And check out all our sponsors. They're what make this show go. And we have a new one this week that we talked about. Mashpaddle.com. Also, I understand mm -hmm, the lady at the jewelry place to design art has got another special to help you guys stay out of the doghouse. Keep sending in your emails, comments below, hit that comments box, works really well. And I will see you next week right here on Homebrewer TV.